We can't see their faces, but they still want their story to be heard. Nadia and Sadia are sisters. Earlier this year, Sadia fled Pakistan after being the victim of domestic violence. Being with her sister, who lives in the UK, meant being safe. Me and my son were attacked by my husband. I had to get away. My mind just couldn't cope. I was just looking to live. The UK offered me somewhere safe to live. But whilst tackling COVID-19 has been central to government efforts recently, charities believe the vulnerable are falling through the cracks. As an asylum seeker, Sadia has found it difficult to access health care. She's sharing one bedroom with her sister and her two children and relies on charity food parcels. I just want a normal life for me and my kids and for my health. I just want security for me and my kids. Sadia isn't entitled to claim public money, but after her counsellor intervened, she now receives £15 a day for her family. If her application is delayed, she might be required to live on this for a while. We've always argued that the Home Office needs to make swift decisions on the cases that people have, their claims for asylum, but too often those decisions linger, not just for months, but even for years. And in this pandemic, that's exacerbated. Rabina Khan has been a counsellor in East London for 10 years. She's noticed a spike in the number of asylum seekers who are in need of more help since the pandemic began. They need to suspend that no recourse to public funds because what it's doing under the pandemic, it is affecting many lives, including black and ethnic minority communities, particularly vulnerable children. They've got to stop that. The Home Office say nobody should find themselves destitute during this crisis and also say they've recently increased housing capacity, which is free and furnished. In the coming weeks, we'll know more. If others like Sarja will be made to wait, will they be able to start new lives here or not? Warren Nettleford, 5 News.